so we are joined here with Mr. Tristan Miller, uh, new teacher here at Drums Etc. on Tuesdays. If anyone's looking for lessons, he's your guy. Uh, we've got plenty of availability at the moment when, the, as this podcast is coming out. We're just getting started, so you got a full open schedule. That's right. 11 to 8. 11 to 8. 11 a.m. 8 p.m. Every slot is open right Dude, now. Dude, so and we are, gonna, we are going to fill you up, baby. We are so. going to fill pumped, you up, man. Pumped to get in here. Yep. Yeah, dude. Yeah, dude, we're psyched to have you. So I do want to give people a little uh, intro type bio to who you are and sure. stuff. Usually, what we like to do is start off by just asking you the simple question, and this will kick off our entire conversation. Okay. How did you get started with the drums? Ooh. So I started playing the drums. I think I was two or three. So I was very. Young. That's why it's so good. Yeah, no I wonder. didn't start playing until no high school. Wonder. If I started at two or three, I'd be just as good. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> it was just one of those things where. Um, well, so my parents tell me I was, I would they would have I would be in the car with them, take they'd be taking me wherever, mm-hmm. um, wherever we had to go, and they'd be uh, playing music, you know, whether Michael Jackson, Third Eye Blind, whatever it was, mm-hmm. uh, on the radio back in I don't know two thousand one, two thousand two, and when they would put me into bed in the crib, I would be playing the melody to whatever song was on the radio, mm-hmm. and they would hear it and be like, "Is that Smooth Criminal by Michael Jackson he's playing, <laughs> or is that <laughs> is that so Jumper cool. by Third Eye Blind?" Get out of town, and they're like. Okay, let's let's try to get him a drum kit. So I got my first kit when I was three, awesome, and they got me a man. drum kit. Well, I was like playing on like cereal boxes and stuff, and, yeah. like you know all that. And they're like, okay, I was like, he's got like some kind of rhythm, so I think we should get him a Big drum time. kit. That's and awesome. they got me a drum kit, and then I started taking lessons when I was I want to say like four. They got me my first teacher. I was I don't think I was uh, cooperate. Crazy. I don't think I was cooperating very well, but I, I technically so started taking lessons yeah. before. But then my teacher after that uh glenn farrakin who i studied with when i was five to 18 that's when i started with him when i was i believe five that's something wild. like that now he's his patience he, um, he's his name what's his name sorry glenn farrakin he's based out of uh he's philadelphia area but wow. he's glenn phenom- bless your heart for getting yeah, five-year-old he's, tristan he's the man here. i don't know how he got through <laughs> it man. my add was probably through the roof yeah yeah dude um but yeah he's he's phenomenal he's the reason why i can play the drums the way i can today um yeah you know, phenomenal jazz drummer, phenomenal, phenomenal mentor. Where's he from? So, Philadelphia area, kind of okay. like, um, kind of where I grew up, like Phoenixville area. Okay. Um, but he used to play a lot with Joey DeFrancesco. Nice. Uh, a lot of big jazz guys. I I visited him the other month. He told me he opened for ACDC. Didn't oh know no that. way! So like he's had some like That's great man he, experience. Yeah. He was you know he was be... doing it. Yeah. yeah. He was doing. He was out there touring, gigging with some really big names. Um, pretty sure he's been nominated for Grammys too, but. Yeah, that's great. Great man. guy. I have that influence. Phenomenal what, guy. What are the odds? You got you got hooked up. Well, kudos to your parents for just Yeah, they just found him. I don't know how they out. found him. But, but I mean, um, even earlier on, like we get a lot of questions. Typically, we'll start students here around the age of seven ish. Mm-hmm. M- mean, because we have our private lesson set up here. So it's you got a, a half hour the same day, the same time every week, right? Yeah. And you know the real work happens at home. And, yes. you know, although we don't use the word homework very often around here because there's connotations associated with it. If you really want to excel, especially when you're younger, yep. you come yeah. in, you absorb and hopefully go home and practice. That's I mean, I know idea. it's a foreign concept to a lot of kids, but, uh, you know, that that's that's tough with especially especially if you're younger than that. But right. um, what we do recommend before that is there's no harm in putting drums in front of a kid or putting sticks in their hand. Right. right. You know what I mean? Yeah. And put some music on. Let them jam out to it. They might not be ready for just that the the, the half hour lesson just yet, but right. definitely get them started yeah. playing. Yeah, and I always encourage say, it. Just I always it. say, when when someone comes in and you can tell me, you, I mean, of course, you started when you were four or five, so you might be okay with this too. Uh, is like we can give one lesson a shot, right? You know, and, yeah, and if they're like, hey, you, they're not ready just yet, and they're a little all over, all over the place, mm-hmm. and they're not focused just yet for yeah. lessons, because the last thing you want to do is for them to be discouraged by it. You know, and yeah. go, okay, oh, he has rhythm. He really wants to play. And now he has to, now it's work. Right. And you don't want it to be that. You still want it no. to be fun. So there's there's a fine line there. But, you know, of course, you started that young, too. So I, I wouldn't, uh, you know, feel bad about saying, hey, Tristan, you know, mom and dad says four or five-year-old little Johnny or little uh, other little Tristan, because that's probably going to be the new Johnny now. It's <laughs> the, new, the new name, you know. Um, <laughs> you know, he has rhythm and... You might be able to nurture that, and I know you can. Yeah, I try. So with the younger kids, I always try to mix like games in there. Mm-hmm. You know, keep them you know interacted, and then you know maybe do you know ten minutes of games or whatever on the drum kit. Right, and then we'll approach. do some. Like you know, we'll do some technique stuff. Um, and if I see they're starting to lose it a little bit or not interested, yeah, 
resort back to the games for a hot sec and then go back to the technique or the you know easy independence for beginners you know, stuff like that sure sure stuff like yeah, that you gotta so, mix it up that's awesome man gotta make it fun you can't you just have be, to let's let's read down this page of the gary <laughs> chester newbury book and it's then like, yeah you know play this into left foot independence fulcrum so. Like yeah, straight exactly. off the bat. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. Just, Remember. Remember. Like, they're like, there's... Yeah. You, you, hear the, even, you hear these like, horror stories of like you know Rick and John and their drum teachers where they like they would like you know you oh, they not, freaking do that kind oh, of stuff you know the, what I mean like I'm like Ugh. Oh, like that's yeah. kind of that's freaky well yeah. there's there's a lot of uh, um, I love like someone was telling me a story the other day about you know their their teacher um, would you know light up a cigarette and go make a sandwich mm -hmm. keep the door open to their basement and they can just hear what you're doing and you're down there doing your practice and mm -hmm. then they'd stop and they'd be like, don't stop you know just yep, shout to yep. like boy our, our kids spoiled nowadays they got one on one you're playing games with them that's great yeah. what a great way to learn we have video screens um, we have you oh know, yeah we're trying music. to be as interactive as possible like I was showing you downstairs got the screen to put yeah, the amazing. visuals everything like that anything you need man let us know you guys but, got it set up here so you're taking lessons you're doing that right. um, let's let's Fast forward at some point through there, do you join the school band? So I started doing band at my grade school when I was seven, eight, something like that. Wait, I started doing like snare drum. Yeah, it was very young. I was gonna say that that very seems young. that seems young for. I went to a, a small private school, and at the small private school, okay. you can start band in second grade. Wow, that is yeah, wild. and that is why my parents picked this specific school because you can start band. So I started doing. Wow. I had started taking lessons there as well as with Glenn. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, when I was like seven, eight, doing concert band, and then as I think fifth grade is when I started doing jazz band and getting into that kind of stuff. Um, and then I did the school rock program outside of school. I was part of the school rock program. Mm -hmm. um, I went to the Mainline one in Berwyn. Then in high school, I switched to the Downingtown one. Um, okay. In Downingtown, PA, right. and that helped me become a performer. Yeah. Because you're able to go on stage and play. Uh, with all these different kids and from an audience, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I had like the school stuff going on, jazz band at school. I was learning. I was getting my jazz chops there, and then yep. I was doing the school rock thing. You know, playing Rush, playing Black Sabbath, doing you know, playing Tool, like all that kind of stuff. Yeah, and performing that in front of an audience. So yeah, getting that feedback, and and we mentioned it the other the other day talking about um, the, like the first time I post a clip for another show, like the first time you you play with a band and you nail it or the first time you have an experience and the audience is like cheering for you. Not that you do it for that, but right. all of a sudden you're like, feel that rush of like feedback, Yeah, all this hard work. And then it, you have the payoff of it. It's not just yep. practicing for your own little wins. Like, yes, I got that rudiment moving on. You know what I mean? Right, it's like, right. it's like when you, when you play a song, even if it's super simple compared to what you're studying and where your goals are, that encouragement keeps you moving until the next goal and the next exactly. goal. Yeah. And the next goal. That's great. So, it, yeah. so at some point, um, did you start a band? Like, do you start, like, a band in your garage, like, that kind of thing? Or was that not part so, of your world until after school? I think I had, like, one or two little bands in high school. We didn't – I didn't really, like, join a band with friends and go out and, like, try to gig that much. Yeah. Like, nothing, like, super serious. I mostly just stuck to doing school rock and then, like, jazz band. I did it a little bit in high school as well, a little bit of marching band. Um, but I was busy enough with school rock. I, I was a part of yeah. the – it was That's called awesome. the house band program there. So with through that – we go out and play in the public. Um, what a great! That's amazing. And Neat. then from there, you can audition. And this is like it's they're all over the world now. Mm -hmm. And it's like yeah. you can audition for this all star program. And it's like a very small percentage of kids get in. And through that, uh, they put you on a tour, like a ten day tour. You go, you rehearse for two or three days. You learn the songs obviously on your own. Mm -hmm. You go to the location. So I, like, the first year, for example, I got I flew down to uh, or out to Chicago. I'm sorry, I flew out to Chicago, and our end gig was playing. Gathering of the Vibes in um, Connecticut. I think it was like Hartford, Connecticut or something like that. So we did. We awesome. learned the songs on my own, whatever they assigned me. Went, met up with all the kids, rehearsed for, I think it was two or three days mm -hmm. in Chicago. Got on a bus, played seven shows or six or seven shows that week, I forget. And then like kind of on the way over. So we played a show in Chicago. And then we stopped in, I don't know, Toledo, then Cleveland, mm -hmm. then Philly or whatever. And then, you That's know, played awesome. shows on the way. freaking tour, baby. Yeah. That's <laughs> all, that is awesome. It was a really, it was, that was kind of like how I got that experience out of yeah. your age. And like so many of those kids now that were like yeah. doing that with me are out touring the country. That's it. I was wondering, man. I'm like, like, you know. There's some killers out there. Yeah, you know, dude. I, Cause you know, just mm -hmm. listening to your drumming and, and, and everything else. And I'm like, man, this guy's next level. And I, now I was talking, I was joking with Adam earlier. I was like, 
I want to ask him how he got so good, and, and I'm I'm afraid he's going to tell me something I don't want to hear. That's be, <laughs> <laughs> I practiced a lot, which he did, of oh, course, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But some uh, of these other kids too. I'm telling you, man. It's geez, crazy. like There's I'm like, man, that's a guy. Great yeah, idea. yeah, yeah. So I did that for three years. It was like my sophomore, junior, senior high school. I did through I got to play Lollapalooza. It was really cool. Um, I was at Mopop Fest in Detroit. So kind of like all over the That's eastern great. side of the country. Some kids got to start out in like New Mexico or whatever and tour to La Palooza or whatever, and I'd go across like the whole, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah, that's just it. You could go and, of course, do all that stuff and, and practice your butt off in the basement and, and, and right. read and, and study and all this kind of stuff. But if you're – you did it, man. You, you're you a part of the school rock and like you're on tour. You're playing with other people and you're practicing. You got freaking – Everything, yeah. all like, yeah. I man, focus, man, that focus, that freaking, yeah. oh my god! Like, I would definitely no not be where I am today. No freaking wonder, man. I was, because I was, I had a lot of stage fright as a young kid. Like, I remember, like, yeah, the, like I think my first show at School Rock when I was nine was like ACDC. I remember just like palms were sweating. I was like oh, shaking. God. I was like, dude, I gotta play these songs. I gotta play TNT in front of an audience right yep. now. Yeah, how am I gonna do that? Uh huh. And eventually, as time goes on, it's like I went from ACDC. Then it was like seventh grade. I was playing Tool. And then it like you know then you're playing Rush and it's like mm-hmm. as it progresses you're like oh okay I'm getting comfortable on stage now and then you, you progress yeah. and you're in the house band like out performing and you know yeah. playing different venues and stuff and then it's like becomes very comfortable and like that's all the awesome. other kids kind of felt the same way too. yeah like, yeah they're all like learning awesome together boot camp man it, yeah it was it. amazing I still I on Mondays I still teach at School Rock just because I love it I and we it. did that we we uh, we hosted an event. Uh, in the summertime, we called it Rock Club, and we had a couple of the former, you know, teachers come down from School of Rock and and help us out. We would do it a whole month, and we would teach all of our kids this, and then they would perform here in town. We did a couple of gigs here, like one was at the Chameleon Club, and that was freaking off the hook, man. Oh, that's like, so I mean, I just remember, I, oh gosh, and like. I was so impressed with these kids. I couldn't believe it. The end when they hit, mm-hmm. they counted it off, and boom, they went into the, their their songs and like the the sound system. They sounded so good because you'd see these kids like practicing all summer long, like in yeah. the in our back studio that we used to have at the old store and everything else. And like they sounded good, but then yeah. once you, they had all those watts behind them mm-hmm. and, and everything else, and the it all it all came show. together. You could you could yeah. see it on their faces, man. It was like. So we, we did a gig at the Laser Dome and then down at Rick's Place downtown here That's and really a couple cool. other places up there at the Effort of Main Theater with uh, Steve Brown mm-hmm. when he yeah. uh, had that up there uh, on his stage. So Yeah, we've done different things over the years. At the moment, the only thing that we have like that, which is still awesome, what we'll, what uh, Rick actually organizes it primarily, but we'll, all our teachers get in on it, sideways oh, yeah? deal kind of thing, okay. is uh, what he'll do is he'll hire a band. So for one recital, he'll have people play on the longer tracks. But what he does for his recitals is he'll hire a band, and then they sit in for each song. Mm -hmm. So he'll call a band, hire the band, right? Here's the concept. You hire the band. Usually it's a a band that plays all covers, you know? Mm -hmm. And they send you their set list. He -hmm. posts it on the wall downstairs. Students can sign up. And learn a song. So you're the that's like how it is a school rock. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's what yeah, I'm saying. Yeah. Absolutely. That's what we, so that's yeah. what we that's do here. So but since Rick, we don't have a spot in house here, we we go to different venues. And yeah, do it. we cool. we have that's been doing really it over cool. here at the Sandwich Factory. Okay. And, and uh, the next one's going to be in, I believe, in April up mm-hmm. here at the Stoner Grill. So okay. go check it out because then that way yeah, you know absolutely. what to. I mean, you definitely know what to expect. I, I know you you do, but you know that real experience though, that performance experience, nothing that beats it. Playing at a venue, you've got. An audience, you're the only drummer on stage. Yeah. You know, it's all on you. And the band can obviously we we make sure we hook up with bands that are really mm-hmm. nurturing, especially to younger players. But it's a really cool way to learn and to play. And you talking about that makes me like psyched. Like I want to revamp this and make it bigger and like yeah. put yeah, a couple you guys shows. Definitely should. Like, yep. yeah, man. We do we'll 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 talk about and, it. And yeah. the cool thing about it is like I'm still really close with a lot of the other kids that were doing it. And yeah. like there's times where, you know, we'll be touring somewhere and we play with their band. Like I've gone so up to other, I've gone yeah. to other cities and like I'm like oh, you guys want to play a show? Like I know you know like I'd say a drummer friend of mine's playing another band. Like oh we sh- our bands should play yeah play a show together and then we link up and do that. That's awesome. so it's like the connections stay there throughout life. So it's really I love cool. It. That's neat. While we're talking about bands, we always yes. ha- this is a new a new uh, segment or part of this part of this segment that I'd love to talk about. Any band names, early band names, they're usually always horrible. Did you come up with them? Did they come up with them? Any you were psyched about or any that were embarrassing? I had a band with two of my friends. I don't think it was a bad band name, though. It was called Suburban Curb. That's a good name. I don't I like think that. it's a I like yeah. that name. I like that's that. a good name. That, but again, that's like the only like 
high yeah, school yeah. like band outside of okay. like okay. school okay. organized and stuff. With, that the, I was with in. the with the school rock thing, do you guys come up with that, or do they like do you have bands, um, band names and stuff like that? It's usually just school rock house. Band. Okay, okay, okay. Um, I don't think maybe other school rocks do. I'm yeah, not sure, but yeah. we usually can't come it's up with a bourbon curb, name. dude. That's that's awesome. which I thought that was a like cool that. name. Dude, that, that reminds that's me of skating. One. I grew up as a skater, and I me was too. like anything, yeah. dude, anything with a with curb. I was like, heck yeah. I dude. think we all skated Some, too, so that was rad. maybe that was part of it. Who knows? I was like, that 15. I don't know. It appeals to me, but anyway, that's that's cool. Sorry, continue. No, you go. Um, at, uh, you did the school rock thing. Mm-hmm. At at what point? And let me ask you this: as far as like, because we, we were talking earlier about you know, side hustles and different things like that. Yeah. Um, I imagine at some point you've done other jobs besides being a musician. Oh yeah. At what point did you like, did you, or do you feel like, okay, now I'm a pro, you know, like now I'm just doing supporting myself with all music type stuff. So honestly, not till really recently, I quit my other job back in as like Labor Day weekend. Mm -hmm. It was like when I stopped. And then yeah. even after that, I was still like, I was starting to get more students, starting to get more gigs, stuff like that. So I was like, still, you yeah. know, door dashing a little bit. Well, that's good. That's um, why I, went, I wanted to bring it up because I knew like it was, it, it's obviously you're out there killing it right now, mm-hmm. but like it's all relative to how, how what the timeline's like. So what has that process been like? Because I know a lot of people go through that. Sometimes it's like this weird identity crisis of yeah. like, am I really a pro musician versus, you know what I mean? But it's yeah. like, you're now supporting yourself. What was that like? And what has it been like so far? It's been amazing. Um, it it was a little scary, I guess, at first, uh, just quitting that job and taking that leap of faith. Um, you know, I was like, am I going to be able to support, uh, you know, pay my bills, support myself, sure. support, help support Kate? But I was like, I, you know, now that I did it, all these other opportunities are coming my way because I have fully um, just engulfed myself in music and just mm-hmm. like, this is what I'm doing. Um and just from that and just going 100%, all these other opportunities came my way and I'm like able to do it full time. I'm really like, because I was still, you know, in the fall, I was still DoorDash a little bit here and there, just make some extra money. But like after the sure. holidays really is when I've kind of been really able to say that I'm yeah. doing this full time. Yeah. Yeah. And it's been amazing so far. It's, you know, it's, I'm still very, very early in my career and I'm still figuring it out like a lot of people are. Yeah. But, um, you know, just trying to grind right now, taking it one step at a time. And it's been it's been a scary but beautiful process so far. That's so awesome. I'm excited to see where it goes. Yeah, that's really cool. That's really cool. Um, so I wanted to uh, ask you about uh, teaching versus playing versus recording because you kind of ha- have had the trifecta of experiences mm-hmm. over the years doing different things. Is there something that you're like, if I could just do this, I would be content? Like, do you get that rush from playing? Because I know some people who are like, no, like, if I could just, like, have people send me tracks, just record drums at home, like, I'd be super yeah. happy. Other people are like, I love to teach. Like, that's how Rick is. Like, even when he when he was was running the shop, yeah. he was like, I can't wait to just be able to do that, you know? And he enjoys yeah. it that much. That's a good question. I, I, I love all three a lot. And it's like, it doesn't feel like work to me because I love all of it mm-hmm. so much. I mean, there's some about performing, though. It's just like... It's like a high, you know, being on stage, like being able yeah. to, you know, impact people's lives through music and like visibly see that. Mm-hmm. I don't know, there's something about that. It's yep. just different. But as you know, as I get older, and as time goes on, like and as I'm doing more session work in studios, like I love recording. I love like mm-hmm. adding uh, what I have to offer to other people's music and uh, taking it up to the next level. And um, I, I guess performing still would be number one. Performing still yeah. has the little bit of an edge. I think it's got the edge, yeah. It's but then, just... uh, you know, as I'm sure that this uh, is something that you think about too, like you kind of live a little bit vicariously through some of your students that are coming up exactly. and they're playing too, and you kind of get that rush exactly. when you see them play, right? I mean, yeah. it's almost the same sort of rush that you get when you're playing because I, I see st- students that aren't even my students because I don't teach, but like, mm-hmm. you know, youngsters or whoever I know that, have, that are coming in here. I get a rush when I see them playing and everyone's cheering and having fun. So I know it has to be like, you know, 10 times over for, for a teacher. Yeah, that's an, that's another reason why I love teaching. It's like being able to see your yeah. students blossom. And, you know, the goal as a teacher is to make your students better than yourself. It's mm-hmm. like always my mm-hmm. goal when I'm teaching. It's like I want you to be better than me one day. So please listen to what I have to, t- <laughs> yeah. what I have to say. You have to learn so, everything I know first. Yeah. And so then you can be learn better more than me. So you can be better, yeah. Yeah, so that's always, you know. I always love to see that. It's yeah. super inspiring. It's not the it's not the other way around. It's like, okay, I taught you everything that you know, but I didn't teach you everything I know. You know? Right. Yeah. <laughs> You're no, you want to? <laughs> I try to give him holding. Yeah. I'm not teach. I'm not showing him this. No, I never withhold. I try to give him right, secret right, sauce. Right, right. Yeah, 
That's it, man. That's the philosophy that we have here as a drop yeah. shop too. We're like just give, give, give. Yeah, just tell you. I'm and like, look, we're give. gonna tell you what we think, how we, how we think, and we, we have as a drum shop, we can be impartial. You know, we, we don't need. We're never gonna say like this is the best. We can mm-hmm. say this is the best value for you now, but one product over another. You know, we'll highlight things and show off things, yeah. but it's a real personal journey. You know, we talked about a lot of things today, but just, you know, what your preferences are. You know, in the crank up, turn down type things. Right. What, uh, what products are out there that might, might dig it, you might not. Um, you know what you get out of <laughs> symbol. I point to the symbol yeah, in the ground right. more. Yes, um, but no, it's a really personal journey, and and sound choices are, are part of that. And and like like you're saying, the gigs you're taking and how you kind of carve your own path is really personal. So yeah. we're here to support it. it. Sounds like you're here out here supporting it and doing it up, man. Yeah, so absolutely. That's cool. That's cool, man. Well, do you have anything else you want to talk about, drum related at all? Anything you want to get off your chest? Like <sighs> off a, my chest. A, a jet addressing all drummers. Stop beating up house gigs or house kids. Like, you know, there's there's always something like that. But no, I just want to kind of open up the floor a little bit and then we'll we'll close out, man. But I mean, maybe other drummers and musicians, like if you're kinda of at that place that I was where it's like you're almost ready to quit that job and mm-hmm. t- the job that you, you know, hate your day job, whatever, and you wanna yeah. pursue music full time and you're hesitant to take that leap. I mean, especially while you're young, just do it. Just take that leap. Um, you know, the worst, the thing, the biggest thing I fear is like looking back 30 years from now, it's like, man, if I really just took that step, mm-hmm. who knows what that career could have been like, you know? So it's like, just take that extra step, just take that leap of faith. Mm-hmm. And, um, if you really put everything you got into it, um, good will come. So, yeah. Awesome. I think, I think that's Adam, I'm quitting and I'm becoming Tristan's drum tech. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god! Sean's like, Sean's like, take that leap of faith, yeah. Tristan. I will be in your service. <laughs> this guy, this no guy, way. and that's what it looks like when someone takes their cart and hooks onto another horse. You know, oh <laughs> that, my god. Sean's career is gonna about to take off too. <laughs> Just as his drum deck. That's how. That's yeah, how much that's this it. guy's killing it. That's it. That's how guys. How much this guy's going. That's it. All right, guys. Thanks for being here. Thanks for joining us for another episode of Drum Key. Um, if you want to contribute to the show, uh, obviously feel free to wherever you're watching this, uh, click uh, click uh, the comments. You know, let us know what you think. If you have any uh, requests for any other segments or topics, or you want to crank up, turn it down, and see what we have to say about uh, different things. You know, you got a quick question you really want us to dive into, we can do that for you. Uh, either post a comment wherever you're seeing this, or we have a Discord channel. Uh, if you check out our our link tree and our YouTube page, we've got discord linked there so you guys can hop in there say hey i'm from so and so you know langster pennsylvania i play this kit hey what do you guys think about the you know the pearl eliminator pedal i'm thinking about mm. buying you know we're here we're here for a sport in addition drum keys our podcast drums etc is our drum shop if you guys ever need anything uh feel free to to reach out to us as always support your local drum shops if you don't have one we will absolutely adopt you and gladly welcome you into the family like we've had tristan tristan's now roped in he's teaching yeah, here baby. he's working here he's all been on the podcast Can't wait he's been on the podcast if anyone's looking for drum lessons tristan is available do it do it check take out that leap and of faith take take the leap of faith <laughs> and check out his band big fat meanies yes, they are own. off the hook and you'll know why you need to come in and take lessons with tristan because he is a bad mammer jammer baby thank let's freaking do this thank you all right guys see you next time